stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on amazing home theater surround sound? We're talking about 3D immersive audio, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, Oro 3D. Today is part two of a three-part series. Part one was the formats themselves, understanding Atmos, Oro 3D, DTSX. Part two today is the equipment selection, getting the right equipment, whether it's speakers or processors that properly support those three formats. And part three will be the content. What is immersive content? Which movies really take advantage of the equipment you bought? Now, before we jump into the video about equipment purchases, you're asking, wait a minute, what did I decide to buy? What is my equipment of choice to support all three formats. So we'll wait till the end. At the very end, I'll tell you what I picked up based on my conversations with Patrick Shoppert and with many others. But I will give you a hint. It's today's sponsor. This is a security camera, the Bosma security camera. And why is it relevant? Well, I'm going to need this in order to protect my investment, my home theater processor. Is that enough of a hint? Well, how about if I peek under the hood, guess what it is. Today's sponsor is the Bosma EX Pro Security Camera, the 2021 IF Design Award recipient. The security camera has package detection, person detection, and an automatic siren to protect your packages. But what if they come back at night? No problem. Night vision and automatic spotlights will deter would-be intruders coming back for another bite. And with its cloud storage capability, you can check out everyone who's been prowling outside up to 30 days or longer with a subscription. Other cool features unique to the Bosma EX Pro, facial recognition of your regular visitors and auto tracking that follows the fleet of foot. He can't get away. Okay, how much? It will launch after August for $150, but if you pre-order on their Indiegogo crowdfunding page linked below, you will get a discount. Just enter your email on the sign-up page and soon enough, you will get the Bosma EX Pro security camera. And once again, our guide is Patrick Shoppert. He will take us through the buying process of the equipment, the AVR, speakers, how to lay out the speakers for O3D, DTSX, and Dolby Atmos. Take it away, Patrick. And so now I'm excited. I want to find an AVR with Oro 3D or Dolby Atmos or DTS. But if I get the hardware, the processor, the question is, my budget is spent. I have no money left for speakers. What's the minimum number of speakers to have an effective three-dimensional sound, overhead and lower? So I know you advise a lot of clients Let's start with the basic. What is the least expensive oral 3D system you would suggest? How many speakers is that? Five and four. You said nine speakers. Yes. Five below, yes. four overhead. That yes. could do oral 3D. Yes. It can do DTS and yes. it could do Dolby Atmos. Yes. And that would be, let's say, a Denon receiver, right? So for the viewers who are watching, I'll look and find out which Denon receiver is the least expensive. And that would be the X4700H. It comes with nine amplifiers already, but there are two more pre-outs, so you could have 11.2 channels. Current prices are in our affiliate links in the description below. This is the minimum to get the full effect of Oro 3D, Dolby Atmos, or DTSX, right? Absolutely. Dolby is saying we can use only two of them. That means you can use then models like a 3700 from Denon because they are using seven, um, they have uh, seven amplifiers inside and they say five to two. Okay, and then there is no Auro integrated. The next step is uh, when you'd like to say, okay, it sounds very interesting and I like to invest the money in four additional loudspeakers, then you need from Denon the 4700 mm. and from Aurans the uh, 7015. Both machines have minimum nine amplifiers. So five for the bottom, two for the second level. Okay, uh, four for the second level. For the, okay. okay, and that's the minimum. And then you have the best of all the three formats. Otherwise, you hear the sound and it's again, it's like a big balloon. You are with your head and the balloon, yeah? Uh -huh. And if you have only two, then the balloon is defect. It's not working. <laughs> it is not working. It's not around you. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. Well, then let's talk about speakers then. Obviously, we know what receivers to get. It says 
Oro 3D, it's the DTS. But for speakers, prices are everywhere. I mean, can you get just the cheapest speakers you could find? And to start, that would work, right? Or do you have any recommendations for minimum yeah, look, specifications? Look, what, what are yeah, we talking about? Yeah, look, look, on Dolby Surround, maybe you remember too, Dolby Surround, they said me in the beginning, two, 20 years ago, ah, this is not so important to have a good speaker because you have only some kind of frequencies there and then yeah. you have something a little bit, woo -woo -woo. no, yeah. sorry. On a 3D format, you have okay. a helicopter maybe inside, yeah, in this level, yeah. Also, you have a lot of volume, you have a lot of dynamics inside. So mm. it seems to be that you are not picking a small, small cup of whatever. Um, so take please a loudspeaker which have a good frequency, and of course you can buy loudspeakers. Depends sometimes also on the room size with 100, 150 dollar each for the loudspeakers. Other people say no, minimum 500. So we have no open. There's no open. It's an open end. Okay, so it is a loudspeakers which had a lot to do if you have a good 3D sound source. It's, okay. it, it can be a helicopter, it can be a bomb, an explosion, it can be a cry, it can be an instrument, it can be a lot of things. Okay. okay. That makes sense. And now, <laughs> so the overhead speaker, as long as it could get loud enough, uh, are we talking 85 SPLs, 95? Uh, down to like maybe 120 hertz, something like that? Because how low does it have to go? About 120 hertz? I can't imagine overhead speaker would get lower than 120 hertz, right? No, it is not a need to have, but it's okay. Also, okay. We have loudspeakers which are really very compact. The, mm -hmm. the problem is really what kind of loudspeakers you can install from the size. Yeah, yeah. true, so, right. um, you know, you know, Bose. Bose has very small ones, which are right, very powerful. Right. But then we have this typical loudspeakers, which looks like the size from your one you have in the background. Yeah, <laughs> and this overhead, right? <laughs> this not, looks not really nice overhead on the ceiling on the wall. Right. So that was really, I think, a problem for the loudspeaker industry. They were really a little bit surprised of about the systems, and they have not really. Uh, I would say they have not really developed loudspeakers which have the best in performance for 3D sound and looks very nice. So I get not a problem and headache when I come with this kind of loudspeakers at home and say, I like to install it in the living room. So, okay. So there are not so many companies uh, which were really focusing on this kind of loudspeakers. Because you were talking about the overhead. Now, I know some Dolby speakers they yeah. bounce. They bounce off the ceiling, but I've never tested it. And I know you've tried it. What What is your impression? Do you like them? Does it work a little bit? Is it close to having overhead? The the bouncing speakers reflecting off because some sound bars they say Dolby Atmos, and they bounce off the ceiling. And some speakers are designed to put on top of your tower to bounce off the ceiling. Is it a waste of money? Does it work? Is it fifty percent Atmos? What, what are your thoughts on that? So it's it's not a waste of money if you have no other chance to upgrade your system. Yeah, then it's better than every three watt loudspeaker in your television uh, when you like okay. to work with a sound bar. And of course, is a Dolby Atmos certified sound bar, and there will be also an hour 3D certified sound bars available in the near future. It is very impressive what is coming from the sounds from a small loudspeaker, and which makes a lot of more than a typical old sound bar. It makes more. But I would never say this is now the alternative to my original installed five loudspeakers in there. But for the mm -hmm. people which have no chance to install this, this is a big step forward to get more fun and to hear more of the sounds from the movies. Okay, so I would say, and now nobody, and it's I think also the manufacturers are not saying with this loudspeakers you save the money and the space for all the other original ones. No, it's a good alternative for your normal television loudspeaker because this is really poor. So that brings us to even more confusing. Let's say I bought the receiver, really? I have the speaker, but then I look online and I see three different setups. Dolby Atmos wants your speaker in a certain way. And then Oro 3D says, do it this way. And then DTS doesn't care. Just put up speakers, right? <laughs> uh, we don't want to buy a lot of speakers. I only, I could only afford nine speakers, five bed or five ear level, which is easy, right? Just place them. The problem is the overhead. Do you have a recommendation for the four speakers overhead that allows me to play all three formats on one unified layout. Yeah. 
Also, we are a little bit flexible. Huh? Also, we are not really with 20 or 29 or 30 degree exactly. That means if you have not the 30 degree, then it sounds bad. No, we are a little right. bit flexible because it depends also with the loudspeakers. We are using loudspeakers with a wide angle from the, from the direction. So, um, we can install, mostly install the top front loudspeakers, the right and the left one in one line to the bottom loudspeaker in one line up and mm -hmm. then on the wall, on the wall. And then you move a little bit this direction to your head. Around and that's for all, all formats. It, it all works formats. for Atmos. You do this like this way. As an example, in the in the manual from Denim. Oh, yes. runs. This suggestion comes from Denim, which I've linked in the video description below. The Atmos layout is so different that it is definitely not compatible with Oro 3D. However, what Denon has suggested is that the Oro 3D layout is compatible with the Atmos processing. Generally speaking, have your front height channels placed above your front speakers like this at about a 30 degree angle. Similarly, the rear height channels are placed a little bit farther back than the Atmos top channels closer to your rear surround speakers like this. So one of the big differences between Oro 3D and Dolby Atmos is Oro 3D wants you to have your height channels above your left, right main speakers, right? Mm -hmm. And Dolby Atmos wants you to have them closer to you on the mm -hmm. ceiling. Mm -hmm. how, how do you resolve that? Do you follow, if you follow Oro 3D, would it also work for Dolby Atmos? Does Dolby Atmos stop working if you do the Oro 3D install or if you do the Dolby Atmos right in the ceiling, 30 degrees or 40 degrees from your head. Because you're describing, it sounds like Oro 3D. If I do Oro 3D, Dolby Atmos works, right? But some people already have drilled holes for Dolby Atmos. Can they still have Oro 3D doing that? No, this is not working with Oro 3D. If you have okay. installed the, the, the loudspeakers really above you or a little bit in front of you, no? and then in this direction, then it's really nothing you can use for Oro. Auro had, oh. needs to have. Auro needs to have, and this is one of the secret of the the, the really nice sound and, and the secret of success is a nice sentence to to say. But you see it again here. This one is the most important thing here. The thirty degree you see here, and if it's above you, you have far away from the thirty degree and from your what is called Corentz vertical stereo field. This is so extremely important. Otherwise, you hear you, you will hear really a hole. You have a gap between the loudspeaker there and the loudspeaker there. And it's it's also good for and it's also good for Dolby Atmos and it, because it's not. And now you have the hang of it, right? All three formats. You want it all. Why? Well, most movies are natively encoded in Dolby Atmos, but the ones that don't do so well with the Dolby Atmos mix, we'll talk about it in part three, but let's just say the movie just is inadequate. The mix isn't there. You might want to play with the upmixing feature of Oromatic or DTS Neural X or the Dolby Surround. And of course, I really want to have Oro 3D because their upmixer, Oromatic, allows me to adjust how much of that height I get. That's the only format that allows me to do that. Part one, remember that? And then today we discovered, well, you know, if you want to combine layout, you have to put the speakers, if it's Oro 3D, over the front speakers, right? So you have the height above your main speakers and the rear speakers could be compatible with Atmos. So it's not the height of the Oro, but then it would be the ceiling Atmos. That's kind of compromised. And a lot of people just aren't able to have all of that done correct for whatever reason, right? Room layout, uh, the spouse acceptance factor, and significant other might oppose to it. So there is one last piece to this is if you get the right processor who maps the position of all your speakers and then just uses amazing math to figure it all out. So even if your speakers are off by a few degrees or more, they'll figure it out. One processor does do that. It's a little bit expensive, but I'm sure you've guessed it. It is the Trinoff. Now that you know everything there is to know about the formats, part one, the equipment and speaker selection and the layout, part two, part three is left. And we're going to talk about the content, the immersive content, the movies, the music, everything. Well, the whole point of getting all this equipment is so you could enjoy 
the immersive content. And that is part three with Patrick. So here's something special for you all. Part three is coming up this Sunday. We're going to have a premiere. Right at the end of the premiere, we're going to have a live stream Q&A with Patrick. So, boom, on Sunday, you will be able to talk to Patrick. And of course, I'll link it below. And afterwards, if you miss the live stream, you'll still be able to watch the replay and hear all the questions that you missed. Patrick is the man. So until next time, part three or the live stream, stop the phone. Right? <laughs>